members. Um, we have a, a new representative today from the Post and Mail, and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello, my name is Brian Eichmann. I've been with the Post and Mail since about February, and I'm pretty much James' replacement, so. Well, Brian, typically we start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, so if everybody will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Basically, just uh, I mean. and essentially, you you compared it to the state law just to make sure we're right. in compliance. Right now, she did. I just now see she asked me a question here, and I don't I don't have that new statute with me to check. But I don't think she she wants the question. Do I need this in here I, to be yes. in the handbook? So I got to I've got to check on that. Yeah. All right. But otherwise, I, I think it's... All right. Could we go ahead and just table it till the next meeting then? Right. Because I, I saw that too, and I thought, I'm not really sure who she's addressing that to. So. But since it's there, it probably needs... Well, I, when I first read it, I thought it was talking about the um, a conflict of interest statement, because you have to file those too. But I think this means... You, you've got to file a statement that you don't have anybody related to you working for you, I guess, is, is what it means. But uh, an office holder has a different, is, is seen differently because it's, if you look at what it says in direct line of supervision, yep. Um, yep. or under employee, this term does not include an individual who holds an elected office. So. I got it. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll and, and I think it. I think the reason that was in there is, uh, I I'm pretty certain in in our case, as perhaps in many governmental cases, we might have a council person who has a family member that works for the county, right. and if the council person gives a raise, is that is that appropriate? So and I, this says no. This this says they're not yeah. in that. Right. They're, and and right. I just want to make sure we got our but, eyes yeah. eyes dotted and what's crossed. Well, that's that. why I'm a little bit confused when I saw this. Do okay. I need this in here? I, I'll check on that. You guys and that's care the one table list till the next meeting? It's, it, that law probably doesn't take effect till July one. I July assume. One. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. All right. Is that okay with you, Tom? Okay. Um, and I got uh, these uh, comments on the wind ordinance, and I know you're going to talk about it today, but I, you want me to look those over, uh, or is that, those are, is that from, that's not from you guys, that's from the public, I, Right, that's a public comment. Okay. Right. I'll look at it. And, uh... Then I, you know, we still have the that golf ordinance is still on the, you know, um, I've still got to compare that and and see if there's any changes we yeah. need to make in that because of the um, because of the new uh, <coughs> state act. So I've got I'm still reviewing that. So yeah, again, I think that's a July one, except there's some kind of caveat, right? Uh, July one falls on Saturday or something. And, so, Sunday and then. Don't act like you don't know what it says, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trilakes resident. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand the need to be done. Uh, 
you uh, gotta look at it. Okay. Okay, that's that's all I have. Holy oh, macro. Anybody have anything for Dan? No. Did you get the email about the spas? Yes. Yeah, and uh, we don't have to do anything. That was approved the last time. Oh, oh, there is one thing I almost forgot. Uh, there's uh, an issue uh, with um, the seizure of property in the search of some residents in the county it's, uh, that the sheriff's department is, uh, they, when they do seizures and cooperate with other agencies and if a seizure is made by the police, they, uh, they are entitled to uh, make a claim on that money. So I'm reviewing documents that will allow that to take place. I can be less cryptic when I know more details. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, That's in, fact, okay. in fact, there are representatives here, so I may go visit with him. And see That's if fine. If anything needs to be brought to your yep. attention today. That's a future thing then? Yep. Okay. Uh, if anybody has a question, you can give me a call on that. I can kind of sure. explain better. Sure. We, we tentatively, and I, I want to go tentatively, plan on discussing the, the wind ordinance uh, in the next couple of meetings. Mm -hmm. And then um, if the board chooses to have a public hearing, then we'll have a public hearing. Uh, I think it would it'd certainly be prudent to have you at the public hearing yeah. if, if possible. I've read so. the proposed ordinance. So I'm, okay. I'm prepared to do that. Okay. Just, would that be, I assume that would be an evening meeting if that's done. I would think. It would be at the convenience of the public, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh -huh. Or 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't care. That would be different. Um, You're a lot less likely to get my full on divided yeah, section at 6 a.m. Right. You don't want to see me then <laughs> either. So. Uh, I still have on my day timer June 15th, um, lower. Yes. Yeah. That's still that's scheduled. Still good. Dang! Yeah. I, I ask every meeting because I'm just hoping you're going to say, "Oh no, that's that's gone." No, you you're going to get a nice insight on the legal process. Yeah. So. Um. Somewhere along that same line, that was uh, that was a, a subject of discussion. Not this one, but another yeah. one was a subject of discussion at the town board meeting last week. I read in the paper. So somebody else must have a, an issue in that the subdivision with drainage. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, does anybody have anything for our esteemed attorney? Thank you. If, I'm going to go just to talk to Bill. I'll leave sure. if he has something. But if well, he has to use this yeah. you know, if you want to. So. Okay. That's up to you. All right, Thank well, you. we certainly have we certainly have plenty of time. Um, But is it okay with you guys if Michael goes now? Yeah, sure. We will not start the wind ordinance discussion before 2 o'clock. That's what we've told everybody. We won't start before then, but that's okay because we got plenty of stuff to talk about. So, um, so Michael, why don't you go ahead if you don't mind with your okay. report. Uh, the first thing I have is something that I think I addressed just about every time I come in, it's um, the highway's biggest program, and uh, I was telling our new reporter it's uh, one where we get the most calls, people in the summer wanting to know about our swimming program, you know, when we're going to start, what road's going to be done first, what road's going to be done second, tenth, and fifteenth, and is there a road going to be done at all? So all those things are really very important to, uh, to everybody in Whitley County. Um, we have another uh, very big year even though we've we've lost some money will probably materials will probably cost us around 750,000 before we're done um, the one thing we do to make it work like that though is you can't go in and just start sealing if you do that then you're loading up your monthly bills and all that comes in all at one time and so you have this, this, this big claim come in for stone and liquid asphalt, and then maybe your uh, gas check, your MBH uh, gas check comes in, and maybe it's real small. Now you've just subtracted a lot of money from your balance, and counties can get into a lot of trouble doing that. 
if you weren't careful, uh, you could get real close to bankruptcy doing that kind of thing. So what we try to do, and what we'll do this year, is we'll go out and, um, especially the roads we milled, we'll go out and get after those because we want to get the people out of any possible uh, dust that they've been in since, since last fall. Um, although we're not seeing much on those roads. Um, those roads have some calcium chloride built into them uh, to help make them hard, and it also takes some of the dust away. But we do want to get those done, get them back onto uh, chip and seal again. Then we'll take a two-week break. We'll, we'll get out of things that cost money so that we don't have heavy claims, and we'll get out and we'll do things like Gateway, um, as an example, and, and uh, some other places where we're cutting down the berms, uh, places where we have uh, heavy tree limbs that are in the way causing sight distance problems, putting pipes in um, where we have to. We have to be a little careful with that one, particular one, but uh, there's a lot of other things for us to do. We still have uh, mowing to do, um, and it's starting to get tall uh, right now, so we'll get, we'll get started with that pretty soon. So once we do that, um, then we'll get back into sealing again, and then we'll start into our single seals. This year, what we'll be doing mainly is going back uh, after all of the roads we double sealed back in 2009 and some in 10 uh, that only had a double seal put across them. They now have to have their third seal. We typically would do two seals in one year. The third seal comes on the next year. But for us to kind of get ahead of the program here in Whitley, when we started, um, we kept that third seal out. We checked those roads with double seals, found out that uh, they were in excellent shape, didn't have any kind of cracking, there wasn't any harm in letting them go an extra year. And then we took that seal and went out and put it on another road to save it to make sure we didn't have problems with it. So we, we've kind of been doing that here for a few years. Now it's time though to go back and make sure we get those roads uh, in 9 and 10 and get that third seal on them. Uh, so that we can get 10 years out of those roads before they have to be resealed. So that, that's kind of the plan for this year. It'll be kind of a skipping, you know, working real hard for a few weeks, getting out of it on other things that we have to do. Um, Gateway is one that we picked up this year. Uh, I'll talk about it briefly here in a little bit. But uh, uh, just other projects that we have that we, we need to keep, keep busy on and then getting back into the sealing program. Um, Johnson Road, 800 South, 950 West, Wolf Road, those are some of the roads that are going to get, uh, will get double sealed um, this year that are sitting out there kind of like a gravel road right now. Uh, single seal, we've got, we've got just a lot. We'll end up doing about 70 miles altogether um, this year before, um, uh, we'll run out of money before we run out of time. but. Uh, well, 70 miles is still a heck of a year. The, the average, when you look around, especially around the area, and not just the area, I talked to a lot of different guys, and they've been, literally a lot of people have money problems um, that, that are paid by gas tax, and uh, they're doing 25, 30 miles. So it's, it's, a, it's a good year. It sounds less than what we've been doing. It is less than what we've been doing, but those years we were just way ahead on. And this 70 is still a real good one, I think. So, good program, I believe. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is um, calcium chloride. Um, again, due to some, some cutback we've had to have. Uh, and other counties are the same way, I might add. There are not many counties where the commissioners uh, have a program to take care of the, the, the people out in the county the way this county has. Um, I've never been part of it, heard much about it, and Whitley County is one that's been doing it for, from what I understand, for about 20 years. Um, and other counties just don't uh, go out and spend their money to take care of the residents that way. Having said that, we've been putting out about 200 feet for close to, to 20 years. That material does come back up with moisture. It will come back up. And uh, probably to, to close to 90 to 95% of what was put down 
okay? It's not perfect like it was the year before, but it's, it's really pretty, pretty good. So this year with our cutbacks, we, I figured we could, we could do 100 feet. Originally said 50 feet in front, 50 feet behind. A lot of things that we have seen, people that we're talking to, phone calls that we're getting, they think that all those years in the past that a lot of the chloride was centered with the home. And that's not good, if it was. Um, because you really do, in dust control, have to play with those prevailing winds. And this stuff really needs to be out to the west and to the south, pretty much. I mean, you can't get north winds and east winds, but not going to happen a lot. And so what people are asking, could you please put our 100 feet uh, to the west of where it's at now. Attach it to the west end of our 200 feet. That way they have 300 feet and they're taking care of that prevailing wind side. Same thing um, on the south side. Uh, most of the wind's going to come out of the, the south or the west and they're asking if the 100 feet that they have could be attached to the 200 feet on the south end. Therefore, having 300 feet of protection but a lot more on that prevailing wind side where it was sweeping around the end and getting to their house. So um, I think with what we can do, they're actually going to end up better off. They, they really are going to end up with 300 feet. Uh, they're certainly going to be covered a lot better on the side where the wind comes from. And um, that's free. <laughs> that's, that's free to them again this year. The one thing we did do is we offered to them and put it in the paper that uh, it's $80 per 100 feet, and that's based on our cost. Uh, so they're, they're, they're getting the county's price, and the company, we list a number. If they didn't get out of the paper and they call us, we'll obviously let them know what that is. They can, they can call up uh, uh, for the calcium chloride and get 100-foot uh, strips down at 80 feet should they choose or, or think that they're light somewhere or just want more coverage or whatever they want to do. So I think that's an excellent program. Uh, Allen County was kind of one of the last ones where the commissioners were paying, you know, to help out, and now they've cut out. They're not, and uh, the residents can call in, get the county's price, do kind of what we're doing there, but they have to pay for all of their calcium chloride now. I think that they have a choice. The last I heard, talking with a, a friend over there, they can have a choice between what they use for dust control, and there's two choices, but um, they are now paying 100% for it if they want it. So I think, it's, I think things are going real good in that program this year. Now, the last I heard, just talked this morning, uh, they're up in LaGrange County. Uh, I think they said DeKalb next. Uh, and then they're coming straight to us. It looks like the same time as last year, which is about that last week of May. And that was an estimate. They said at the very late, late, latest, depending on weather, it could go into the first week of June. But that, that's just all related to, to weather and that kind of thing. So as people call in, we'll, we'll make them aware of that date. I've already let the people that are answering the phone now um, Karen's not there today, Karen and Tim are off, but uh, uh, Lynn is answering the phone, and if anybody calls in, they're now passing that on so that people will know. And we might even get something in the paper uh, letting them know that it looks like it's going to be the last week of May uh, when they get that done. And explain a little bit more about where that material is going to go. Okay, um, any questions on those two before I go on? Go on and we'll okay, we'll okay, our, okay. We'll come back to those questions. Okay, the th third one, I don't see him here, um, uh, Gateway. Uh, again, we had a conversation this morning uh, between, it was a three-way conversation with uh, Alan Teo, Jim Breckler, and myself uh, discussing things over there. Basically, I said we're still at the orders of, of um, George's group over there now. <coughs> That redevelopment. redevelopment and uh, uh, that nothing had been officially decided. I had not heard anything. 
I know there was going to be a meeting on Wednesday morning. I won't be there, but um, that there's a chance that we might be coming in and, and using the plans for everything we can use them for, and there's a lot of good there, but also it is our road and doing things the way we would do them to get that road done and maybe save the save that group maybe forty fifty thousand dollars and and it'll be done right i mean we know what we're doing when it comes to that kind of thing and jim said that's a probably a good idea he says but i just want you to know what i gave you and what you're looking at he said it was the top notch top of the line top designed you know the way sometimes things get done that way and he said there's no doubt that you guys can get it done for a lot less money this is just the way we built the plans and uh, I said we probably would not be doing any seven foot deep cuts and putting in 36 inch pipes and I, I, you know, I won't go into it any further but uh, should we be given that job to go over and do what it needs to be done uh, I think we can save a lot of money and get the job done the way the way it should be done uh, Alan, I suppose, uh, he said uh, he knows I'm not going to be here Wednesday and did say he would come in and kind of brief the, that group with the same thing I'm saying right now. Um, and, and then uh, uh, he and I will talk when I get back and if we have the okay, we'll start, we'll start getting over there and, and getting at it. There are a lot of utilities working over there right now still. And, uh, of course, the gas company has really been the one dragging. And as we found out this morning, um, the plans that are done, that you, so, that you paid for, they're not correct. And the, but I, I think the city gave them those, the information on plans, not, not Jim's fault. And um, so they're changing all that. But they, they said if we would have gone over, used those plans, and been ready to work now, we would have hit those that high pressure gas line uh, without question. We we would have hit it, assuming that it was down further than what it really is. So thank God for that. You know that we that we didn't and haven't, and we will make sure when it comes to that. I said that I would call Jim. He'll meet me over there, and we'll we will dig down, find that, locate it, so that we don't have anybody getting any trouble around that gas line. Okay, that's about all I have on that. Uh, the next one, uh, Dan's here, so I'll jump down to that. Uh, sign inventory. We haven't talked about that for a long time. It seems like it's been six months. Maybe it's been six months or longer. The federal program. And uh, that thing has died and went and died and jumped, and it's it's been everywhere. And... Um, uh, I asked Dan to be here to say a few things on, on his part, uh, but we've gone to a lot of different meetings uh, with State Highway. We've been in contact with Laura Slusher. Uh, Don, you know her from when we tried to get the guardrail project done with the helpers at LTAP. And uh, uh, we had her on the phone the other day in a uh, two-way conversation with her, basically asking questions, uh, finding out, telling her what we have done what do we have to do? What what is even a regulation anymore? You know, and um, uh, does it do any good to try for the the first fifty, or how do we get to the part where where we get uh, uh, you know maybe up to ninety thousand dollars towards replacing our signs? Um, and and you do pay a percent for that, but um, I I think it's ten percent. I think it. You might have to pay 10, but you might get 90. It all depends how many bad signs you have and what has to be replaced. Dan, you want to jump in? I'm just touching the edges of this for the commissioners. Yeah, but... I was, uh, after having a conversation with LTAP and the State Highway, it seems to be a little conflict of understanding between the two as who is responsible for what. Um, the uh, LTAP people, or the State Highway, when we met with them, recommended that we work with LTAP that would help us walk us through the grant application. And when we talked to LTAP, it was the State Highway that was supposed to help us walk, walk us through this, the grant a application. So there seems to be a conflict of interest uh, as far as who's responsible for what. Uh, we're, from what I can tell, we are sitting right where we need to be with our inventory. 
Um, I do have all the uh, signs now numbered, so for proper identification. Um, we could possibly qualify for the, uh, the $50,000 grant, um, but we can't go back and be reimbursed for work that's already been done. But right now we're looking at possibly going out and using the uh, retro reflectometer, going out and shooting, a, uh, get a number from the sign to see if it meets the standards. I'm not so sure anybody knows what those standards are yet. But um, also uh, we looked at purchasing stickers to, uh, for, for proper sign identification. And uh, we're looking into that, seeing what kind of cost that is. But early on I found a you know, we were talking this morning uh, already about, you know, the cost of the stickers and the work that have to be done. We could possibly be reimbursed, but if we, if it's a, a $50,000 grant, we still have to pay $5,000 of it. And my first estimate is if the price of the stickers are what we think they might be, um, the stickers would be roughly about eight to $900. So I'm not so sure, you know, trying to go for the federal grant is even in the realm of reality. I, I don't know that yet. Um, but all, all the work has basically been done. We just need to look at shooting the, uh, using the retro reflectometer that uh, LTAP has given the county to borrow. I should say borrow. Um, but, you know, that, that work, work would be, need to be done and then slap a sticker on the back um, with a number and say, you know, there could be other some other uh, wording on it that it is. Uh, uh, they could be prosecuted for stealing or uh, vandalizing a sign because uh, currently that's not on there and we have a number of those issues going on right now. Um, I'm really amazed after doing this inventory how much we spend in replacing signs that either have been damaged or vandalized or bullet holes or what have you. It is quite amazing and it is quite costly to the county. So um, I, think, I think we're right in where we need to be. They said they, you know, it was a regulation that we do have an inventory, that not very many counties do do that, but now we have it, and uh, so we're right, I think, from what I've been told, we're right in the, right where we need to be, so. We are kind of amazed that, that uh, they're not really sure what to tell us after all of this, that it's still a lot of uh, gray area, you know, but, uh, a lot of work is, has uh, been done, especially out in the field, by Dan and uh, our sign man at the highway. And um, uh, we were just at a meeting with State Highway, well, I don't know, maybe it's been a month ago now, and they told us to call Laura Slusher at LTAP, Purdue. Called uh, Laura, actually we had to call her four times before we got back and forth, got together, finally got together through an email, and she said, no, call, Dave, call Armstrong at State Highway. And, uh, and then she sent me back a, a, an email saying, I checked this out, I checked with so-and-so, and they sent also, call Armstrong. So, you know, if you've ever had to be sent someplace and they send you somewhere else, then you got to go back. That's what we're into. Um, and that's the best I can tell you about the sign program. We're doing everything we can, and one of these days we'll find out what else we have to do. But they really... Um, released a lot of dates and time it, those dates and times really aren't there anymore uh, where they're holding you to a certain date nor is the money for the uh, hundred thousand dollars there is no more money for that um, and <laughs> they're saying they're kind of at hold waiting if there's going to be any kind of money available they don't know um, they also we did get a memo uh, from them saying that they were looking at possibly midsummer and it's coming up with uh, bottom line regulations that they're looking for they also said it depends a lot on the uh, election and the transportation bill. And I mean, they're it's really federal right now. And and uh, getting back here to Whitley County or some of the other counties in Indiana, it's just really a lot of guesswork. But I think, uh, like Dan said, we have a lot of things done. We already should they ever give us some finality, you know. Yeah, what they said is come up with a plan, you know, and. With the data that we have right now, we could easily do that. You know, if we just, you know, if he decides to go with uh, concentrating on, say, the for whatever reason, you know, the northern townships, you do three townships at a time. Look at those type of what it might cost to replace the signs that need to be replaced, um, and then come up with a dollar figure for that. Then that would quali maybe qualify for the hundred thousand if there was any money there. <laughs> but they said concentrate on coming up with a plan and and your inventory, and I think we're doing that. So. Question here while you're on 
on this. Are all these funds federal, or is there any state? Seems to me you've been talking to, well, answer that question. I believe it's all federal. I mean, it's. And why are we just talking to people at the state? Well, because the state always, no matter if, if you have a federal aid bridge project or a federal aid road project, the state runs the program for the federal government. The federal government doesn't run their own programs. They have the state do it for them. So the state has nothing financially in this game. It's all federal funds. At this point, that's what I would say. From what I've been able to pick up as well, I think it's, it's the federal that's just giving the money and then the state disperses it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I can tell about this particular grant, these two grants that were out there were basically coming from the feds, <coughs> given to the state for the state to disperse. And how that Outside of regular payroll and you working and the people from the highway, have we employed anyone else or spent money hoping that there's funds coming? Absolutely not. No. 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 no we, one of the things that they said we should have is an inventory in place. So we did that. And we did it ourselves. So we hired no one to come in. No. no. There's, there's several counties that have. They, they've hired consultants. Well, at one time we were talking. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was to get all of the, not necessarily what, what he was doing. In some cases, what he was doing, uh, some counties don't have a person that can do what he yeah, did out there. But it was mostly for the inside stuff, which was the paperwork. Just like back when we did the. Um, uh, the stimulus thing, that was, you know, they sent in all these papers, you were supposed to answer them, and you had to do stories about stuff, and you had to turn all this stuff in. That's what all this stuff was. That stuff really should have been turned into a consultant back at that time. Those that didn't turn them into a consultant didn't get anything done. And uh, so there was a start to where that's where people were leaping, trying to get in so that the consultants didn't say, hey, we got too many, and do that, and these other people are just kind of waiting. You know. So if we don't get the money, bring us. If we don't get the money, they'll drop the requirement that the county has to do it, or will they come and tell the county you have to do it, but you're going to have to find. I'm trying to see if the county's going to be left. You know, it goes federal, state, to county. Yeah, Usually, I, 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 it's federal, and I've been told. I, I think Laura told us on the phone last time it was federal, and it will have to be done at some time. But right now they don't even have the money. I mean, they, there's not even money there. So here they, you know, you've gone through this and you tell everybody about it. You have these uh, unfunded mandates. That's kind of what we're under. We, we have this mandate from the federal government about our signs, but unfunded at this point in time. They. Yeah, okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Those, are, those are the same questions I had, George. Go ahead. I, I guess my question is, is this a, a three-year program, a five-year program? What? Or do we even know that, that we have to have it done by 2015, 2017? Uh, early on, they, that's what it was determined to be. So when we seen that, the possibility well, three of three or five. Well, it was, yeah, it was different signs meant different uh, time restraints. Okay. So like your stop and yield and those your warning signs met a different criteria versus your guide, uh, road guide signs. Well, see, the state has changed a lot. Yeah. And there's signs by school speed limits and things like this, so that's what I'm, they had money to do that, but won't shovel any down to us. Yeah. Right. So all, all those dates and things, they've kind of taken them off the board. They're not there anymore. Okay. But they could pop back up again someday if money comes out of the transportation bill somehow. But it, it is a federal program, but it is ran by the state. Right. Mr. Chairman, I would, I would hope that you would mention this to consul so that they know this might be something coming yeah, down the road that we might have to finance it and yep. so Very they good. said well this is a surprise to us we didn't know well they will know May 8th I guess oh. 9th I'm sorry 9th but but actually in there the one part where you're only paying uh, it only cost us 5000 we would probably just take that right out of our sign line item at that time, I mean, unless there was something really nasty going on in that line item, but uh, even the 10,000 
is something that we had planned that could be taken out to get $90,000 worth of signs. I think that's something that could come out of our line item, and hopefully we wouldn't have to go back to the council, but... But sounds to me like you're going to be about $90,000 short. Because I, if, if the federal government's starting to dance now, come oh. about December, they'll really be doing the fast poker. <laughs> and and the, the good thing about this was, uh, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe in the first year I came up, or at least after the first year, we start talking based on a program <coughs> I'd, I'd had before on a, on a layer of signs that we wanted. And uh, one layer that I had before was just stops and yields. Well, Dan said, well, we're out there, why stop at, at stops and yields? And he went ahead and collected the rest. And this is something we had started and we're doing here. And then the federal program came in, oh, I don't know, it was in the middle or towards the end of what he was already doing to put up, just to give the highway a layer for signs. Do, do any of the signs that we have right now, do they comply? Yes. Well, we believe them. We believe they do because they are relatively new signs. I believe most of all of our stop signs are in compliance along with our yield signs. The only ones that I see that are still engineer grade versus the high intensity are some of your uh, right turn, or some of your uh, curve signs, uh, some of the speed limit signs. Um, but mostly, I believe, our, most of all of our stop and yield are pretty much in compliance. So when we do replace signs, do we replace them with signs that we feel would be compliant, or do we not, the work, I, I guess? The work order, the, or the, the work that comes back to me to keep the inventory up to date, because we started this in October of 2010, and I've been, uh, Greg keeps giving me the inventory, or the work that he does, so we can keep the inventory up to speed. Um, most generally, any time an engineer grade is changed out, it's changed out with a new high intensity. So we do have records of all that now, and I could... Yeah, there's no engineer grades being bought anymore. That's old hands, old stuff. So by maintaining the inventory, we know exactly how many signs, uh, different types, uh, the, uh, to meet all the criteria that's being... We need so, to be able So to. by the time the federal government decides what they're going to do, we may have them all changed out. That's very that's possible. <laughs> Could happen. It's a lot of signs, but... Uh, and, and, you know, if the feds drop this program, We've got a heck of a layer, which is what we wanted to have done to, so that we know exactly where all of our signs are. There'll be a little work order behind each sign, so when our guy goes out there, which will help a lot for accident history and that kind of thing, and show that uh, you know we were called at uh, midnight, and we were there at 1245, and we replaced this sign, and all that stuff gets written down behind the sign. And this is all stuff that we were planning on doing anyway that we'll always have, regardless. My, All right. Oh, go ahead. One more question. Yeah. I guess my only question is, when we do um, provide the labels for the back of those signs, and I think I've talked to Dan about this before, is it possible to put an RFID chip, chip in those? I mean, that's not that much more expensive to do that, so that if they are stolen, we can find them. And, it, and um, we have a thing through the our Superintendent Engineers Association where. When you send out an email, that email automatically goes out to all of the counties, and then everybody, the superintendents, all jump in and will send you an email back. So you're getting a big scan of, of everybody. One of the last ones that I just put on was, where are people getting these stickers, you know, for, for us to go? And Dan was doing some checking on his, on his own through some of his friends, but uh, I got back, I can't tell you how many responses back, and Stello, the sign company that we use that was our low bidder for signs, is one of the main people that they're using. Uh, they also use Hall Signs, which is the other bigger. There, there's two really big people in Indiana, and it's Stello and Hall. And, and I think uh, Hall was tied into some of the information he found. So Does anybody do the RFID? Have We'd have to just call and check with them. Easy yeah, phone call. Across that, yeah. It just would make sense to me that it, it's easy. They're easy to... Um, to find out where our, our signs are, and, and it, the RFID chip is very cheap. Might find them in a college dorm. If, if it's so much of a problem, I'm sorry. How much of, well, just how much of a problem is it? I'm just curious. Depends on the names of the signs <laughs> sometimes. Um, but there have been, uh, it's not, 
they don't really steal the stop and yield that much. It's more the guide signs, the, are, signs. the guide, uh, the road name signs. Oh, those are being stolen, and occasionally nice. you find a curve. Or uh, I've just entered some data just this morning that had a, a curve sign and a, a right turn reverse sign that was stolen. Um, We're having a lot of signs painted, destroyed. Some where people are hooking onto them with chains and pulling the whole thing out. Looking at them, I assume. Uh, yeah, I mean that happens. It's it's more been uh, weekend pranks where we get calls. You know, on a stop or a yield, uh, regulatory sign out. Uh, somebody just pulled it out, and somebody finally drove by and noticed it, called it in. We basically have so long to get it put back up to stay out of trouble. So. Okay. <coughs> well, I want to thanks. <coughs> Rewind just a second. You. You, you talk to LTAP, LTAP talks to you, tells you to talk to NDOT, you talk to NDOT, NDOT tells you to talk to LTAP. For Christ's sakes, doesn't anybody sit down with Laura and with this other guy on a conference call? I mean, you need to call them out on that. In, we, in, in my, in my, We just did. Yeah. Um, that's where this came from. It was a conference call. Yep. And Laura even got a second person in case she was wrong. And both said, no, it's Dave Armstrong. So Was Dave Armstrong on the phone? No, he was not on that's the phone. They couldn't, they couldn't get him. That's, well, what that's my point. That was you one need, of the requests. You need that. Dave Armstrong. You need Laura. And and and, and I, don't, I don't have too much here, but I, I'm, I'm wondering if if we're just not wasting time, quite frankly. Time and money. Your inventory is, is vitally important. We need that. We need that for us. Mm -hmm. We don't need it for the feds. We don't need it for anybody else. We need it for us. But at some point in time, I say, guys, we've got you've got sealing to do. You've probably got other work to do. We have dinked with this thing for for months, really. Oh, yeah. And I guess my my suggestion is we don't dink much with it anymore. Other than I really believe that Laura Slusher and Armstrong need to be told at the same time we're getting we're getting answers so we're, we're getting well, by the time we spend five or ten thousand dollars to get the grant but we've already got our mind we might it's going to be a wash or even not spending more to get it right. i mean well, we've already I'm, got it i'm not even going with the yeah. grant right now you know i'm not even thinking about the grant um because it's like you said um we could put up ten, uh, the fifty thousand dollar grant. Put up five thousand dollars, and it costs us eight hundred for stickers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I when, when I first came on board here, and I, I think it was Brandon, and maybe it was maybe it was Michael. I'm not sure. I said, why don't we do? You know, look at all this federal aid that's out there. Look at all this federal aid. We're, why are we using taxpayers' money? Boy, it didn't take long to convince me why. They're they're goofy. They're okay. Maybe that was a bad quote. I'm no, sorry. Goofy's okay. No, I just mean that. The, you know, when when I was told by somebody, it, it's 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 a, it's not worth the effort. I honestly thought that was laziness. I really did. I thought that 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 employee was just being lazy. And then after checking this out, it's in, it's incredible. Just difficult. To Oh my! And most of, the, most of those programs on our 80-20 programs, yep. but your 20 percent is, in a lot of cases, is more than if you went out and built If you yourself. just did it, that that I guess that's my cases, point. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dwell I'm not gonna dwell on 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 that any longer. Then I I don't have anything else on the signage issue, but I do want to go back to your report if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, road 650 East. It runs from Anderson to 300 North. Uh, when you when you took care of the Anderson, you you, I wouldn't exactly say you milled it, but you sh you, you you. We put oil on it to, for dust control because we had oil left over. Was that what it was? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. And we've been up there doing a lot of ditching and and. Uh, okay. Keep, keeping the water off the road, getting it into the side ditches, etc. Okay. And that will be a road, um, as a connector that yeah. that. If we have the money at some point, we're in the area, then we will get a double seal on it. But right now, well, they, they got a, a lot more than a lot of people are getting. Okay, well, it, it, it could certainly, 
I'm not even concerned about whether you seal it. I'm just saying it is it is honestly a connector. Mm -hmm. It takes you from the Anderson Road to US 33. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really does. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's horrible. It's horrible. Um, and yet that brings me to my next my next statement is you talked about the roads you milled and how you want to get on them because they're dusty. That isn't a problem at all. That, I have never had a constituent tell me they're dusty, but I've had a bunch of consistents, cons, that other word, uh, tell me about the potholes, mm -hmm. and, and they are. They, they're, it's a bad deal. So. And we'll lightly grade those just prior to double sealing. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. and, and they're very, very, very hard, and they're hard because of the calcium chloride that we put in them. Okay. And right. that's where we're getting, getting those potholes um, because of that, but when we lightly grade them, I mean, it looks like a horse track you just did before the Kentucky Derby. And then, so they'll, they'll be fine when we see them. All right. All right. Uh, you, you talked about how, and I understand this, you, it comes time to seal, and you got to buy stone, you got to buy, you, you have a huge expense in a month, okay? Um, is it that thought of between the the month you end, the month you stop, October, isn't it possible to save money in November? I mean, the money you're going to spend on sealing has to come some, from somewhere. Can't that sort of be saved up November through April and, and not put you in that big hole? Or is that used for plowing and everything else? I, I guess I, if you, if it costs so much money to seal, what's not being done? that during that time when we seal that typically is the only thing we are doing but okay. again we have been spending close to a million dollars a year yep. in, in, in a in a pretty close time because what you have you have weather controls your ceiling and a lot of times we don't start usually till around June the 1st and you've yep. got to be done by maybe October the 1st uh, maybe back September 15th uh, because what you have to do and it's a guessing game but you're supposed to be 30 days ahead of the first freeze when you quit sealing. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah, don't, yeah, when your yeah. guys go out for that first snow or is something that might fall early, <coughs> uh -huh. then all that stone's going to get knocked off. Okay. And yeah, you're going to find a lot I'm of black sorry. I'm not, not, okay. you're, you're not getting to my point. My, my okay. point is you've, you're spending a lot of money in a compact amount of time. If it costs you $120,000 to... I'm just using numbers. Mm -hmm. Hundred twenty thousand dollars to get that job done. Why don't you save ten thousand for twelve months and and have it? Does that does that make any sense? Instead of hurting yourself and uh, I might be missing the point, uh, uh, but we'll but, talk about but, it. Yeah, yeah, that okay. might be better. Uh, I want to move on to calcium chloride. Then I, I guess the uh, I guess a question I have for the commissioners. And I, why don't we skip a year? Why well, we use that money? Your, your statement was it, it comes back up. It With does. water, it comes back up. Um, instead of considering doing more, I, I, I guess I ask, why don't we skip a year and use that money somewhere else? And how much is that money? What, 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 what okay, do we budget for sealing? Okay, I'm well, sorry, for calcium chloride. When I came here three years ago, there was 50000 in there. Um, we immediately cut it down to half of what they were spraying. I, I thought they were spraying way too much considering, which kind of goes along with your idea, that it's being done every year. You really could go every other year. So we cut it down to half and spent 25000 kept twenty five for sealing. It was one of the reasons we were able to do 113 miles that year. And then we cut down the, the amount they were spraying at every intersection. You know, it, it's one thing where a few counties will do in front of homes, but then to also do it at the intersections is, is a little bit of an overkill. So we were able to save some money there. Now uh, we're down to where we only, I, I think, have 25000 in that <coughs> entire account. Right. And so that's really why we're trying to add 50 on each end or 100 on one end and give them a total of 300 uh, which will keep the dust away. 200 did not keep the dust away. It'll come around the ends and go right to the house. So they're, but yeah, you could do it every other year easily. I, I just, I, I guess I, that was what I kind of gleaned out of that. 
was it, it's going to come it's back. It's just up. A, it, that that's a really good program. Twenty five thousand doesn't strike that. Twenty five thousand dollars a lot of money. I wish I had twenty five thousand dollars right now. But in the grand scheme of things, twenty five thousand dollars doesn't seem that yeah. uh, that much. Okay. And the people appreciate the commissioners doing it. It's, uh, doesn't do you guys have anything else for Michael? I, I wasn't quite done, but oh, I can be done if you got other things. Well, we, need, we got a lot to do today, so if you got something. <laughs> the the next thing ahead. I have is not that big a deal. I can let it go. Alan's here. I don't know if he wanted to say anything about the, or if he wants to wait till Wednesday morning. Well, uh, I had a discussion with, with uh, Ms. Martin this morning about our, our project to, to make some upgrades to Gateway Industrial Park. I guess I wanted to just, just uh, make sure to. Uh, Reiterate or for the commissioners that uh, you know we are working closely between the Redevelopment Commission, uh, Highway Department, and Engineering Resources, a, a engineering firm out of Fort Wayne. We've worked with on a number of projects to to make sure we have a good collaboration and we have a cost-effective approach to make some some needed upgrades to that park um, in terms of drainage, uh, future enhancements could include uh, some new signage, lighting, etc. But uh, the project's ongoing. Had a few delays and some utility issues, but I think it's again a very good collaboration, and uh, uh, I guess we want to reinforce uh, uh, support for Mike and the team at the Highway Department uh, involved in that. So, the only update is that uh, we're a little bit behind schedule uh, for what we thought we'd be, but uh, nothing because for lack of everybody working together and trying to do all we can. So, uh, what about us? Nothing. All the utilities are busy out there now. I mean, they've really kept us from doing to this point. But we should be able to start getting in there. Okay. Thank you, so, yep. Thanks for coming down. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very Thank you. much. We have a few things I really like to move through here, if we could. Um, one, I, I want to tell you about a, a utility permit that I, I would like to get signed this afternoon. Um, what it involves, it's it's from Frontier, who is is actually cooperating with us. A telephone line on 375 North uh, that serves a, a, a uh, lady. I am not going to give you her age. That would be a wrong thing to do. But she's a she's a wonderful lady. It's older. Um, her phone line got cut. She doesn't have a cell phone. She has no access to 911 if she needs it. So um, we we worked with uh, uh, Frontier to get this thing moving along. Honestly, hopefully the job's done <laughs> that it got fixed. But nonetheless, we have, I need uh, uh, a motion to approve a permit to fix the telephone line because it involved our road. That's how we got involved with it. So, yeah, the board crossed. I'll move that we uh, approve the uh, highway permit or the right of way permit for, is it CenturyLink? No, it's Frontier. Frontier? It's Frontier. Okay. For County Road 375 North. Second. Okay, a motion and second. Any discussion? Well, there's no expense to the county. No. Okay. No. No. This is something we normally just do at the end of the meeting, well, but I, we I, we kind of yeah. wanted to get this thing moved. No expense to the county. No. Uh, I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. All right. So we get these. Everybody's cooperation. I don't want anything to happen to this lady. <laughs>